This is the monthly metrics tab, and this is probably the one I get the most questions about, so I apologize for, um, I wouldn't call it leading people astray, but I apologize for the uh, misunderstanding. Let's just put it at that. Um, right now, you can actually get most of your sales dashboard at a monthly level here, and you can see what items actually sold during the month. Monthly metrics is a little bit different in that we're actually looking at items not that sold during the month, but we're looking at items in this case we listed in January of 2015. So we listed 301 items. We didn't sell this many items during January 15. These are items that have sold from this particular batch. So a better way to view this would be just like source metrics. In source metrics, we track, for example, Crofts. We listed 125. We didn't sell 124 in a given month. We've just sold 124 since we've listed them. The same thing holds true for monthly metrics. So why did we do it that way? I'm glad you asked. Here's why. The idea here is we can see, hey, in January 15, my average, you get some metrics based on the month and you can see if your sourcing strategies improve or deprove over time. This was fairly early on for me and this was also a big library haul. So a lot of my books were more long tail. You can see the average rank was 2 million. Now for those of you that say I'm never gonna buy a book with a rank under a million, let this kind of be a little bit of a counter example. The average rank was 2 million in this particular case and we sold $6,500 and we ended up selling 87% of them. So you're not going to sell everything with higher ranks. And if you're just starting out and cash flows, uh, you know, you got a cash flow crunch, then maybe you want to stick to better books. I know some people have gone out and their average rank is, is a hundred to 200,000. Good for you. However, um, long tails are a very important piece of my business, even with long-term storage fees now in effect. Uh, I still think there's a lot of money to be made. And I believe over half my inventory is over a million rank. So uh, I'll just leave it out there. You can make your own decisions on your own business. Um, so what we can do is total sales. Again, this isn't total sales during the month of January 2015. This is sales of items I listed during January 15. My total inventory cost was 446 or an average cost of a buck 50. Amazon took 1800 bucks. I haven't disposed of any of them. Maybe I need to go back and do that. Or maybe I disposed of them during a free uh, disposal period. I'm not sure. Um, the profit was four grand. My return on investment for that particular month 900%. Not a bad ROI. Again, that's one of the main reasons to do books. You can't beat the returns. So we can get a really good picture of our, of our profit per month. And again, depending on what your goals are, whether you're trying to pay a mortgage or, or whatnot. Again, this isn't money that necessarily was returned to you during that month, but it's money that you earned by working during that month. So again, you can get a pretty good idea if you're making three grand a month, that's 36 grand a year. And that's profit. It's not bad take home pay for a little bit of a side hustle, depending on how, how big you decide to take your, your enterprise selling on Amazon. Again, I'm selling mostly books, but this sheet will track anything. You can see other months where in this case, I listed two items that month. I made $14. That's, uh, that's going to buy a couple cups of Starbucks coffee, uh, maybe a round of golf at a cheap uh, local golf course here, but not much other than that. So I need to get back to it and uh, work a little bit smarter and harder in this particular case. We can see that even books I've listed during this particular month, right now it's early April, but my data goes through March. I've already turned a profit in this particular case. However, it looks like I have zero inventory costs, so it's fairly easy to turn a profit as well. Um, and then the charts up here are gonna give you a feel over, over the years. And if your chart gets way bunched up, you can actually grab these and, and move them. So for example, if you have tons of data, once, we, once it lets me grab it, if you have tons of data and your chart looks like this and you can't read it, you can extend it out as much as you want. You can even make them bigger if you want, but try not to mess with it too much. It's just going to feed off the data below. So what we're doing here is we can see how many items we've listed each month and kind of you know, if, know if we're hitting our goals or if we need to work harder. We can see the percent sold. So you can see I, I typically sell 10% a month until I get to about five or six months back, and then I expect eventually to sell usually 70 to 90%. In some cases I sold 100%, but again, that's because I listed two books that month. So selling 100%, it could have just as easily been 50%. So one month out, I typically expect to be at about 10% sell-through rate, two months out about 20, three months out about 30, four months 40, 50, 60, et cetera. And you can see that that roughly holds true. If your numbers are higher or lower than that, then uh, maybe you need to look at your pricing or your, your quality of inventory. Um, you should be able to do a little bit better than, than the 10% a month, but that's kind of a typical rule just to kind of make sure that stuff is still selling appropriately. Again, if, if my sales were only 5% through March, then I need to look at my quality of inventory. Here, the average ranks about 800,000, which is pretty typical for me. So I don't think it's a bad batch. If I'm not selling much, I probably need to go re-examine my pricing strategies. 
You can see the average list price. Now, for those of you who list like with ScanLister and then use a repricer, so you list everything at $200, you're not gonna get a lot of great data from here. It's just gonna show us $200 all the way across the board. For me, I price carefully up front and it's nice to know what's going on. I can see my average list price and make sure that it's, it's fairly healthy and where I want it to be. And then again, average sales rank for your batches that particular month. Now, just one note, if you do list with a $200 list price, your average list price is just gonna show up as $200 here, and your total list price will be a little bit skewed. However, your rank still should be accurate, and your total sales will be accurate. It's not gonna say that you sold it at 200 unless, of course, you did. These will be pulling actual sales numbers. So you're not gonna to have too much data that's off, but that's how to use the monthly metric sheet. Remember, it's not items that sold during the month of February or January. It's items you listed in that particular month that have sold since.